Okay, let's tackle this basic algebra equation. I'm going to show you how to solve this uh, step by step. And the interesting part of this problem is this part of the problem. Okay, now, of course, everything is important uh, to solve this problem. But here, we're going to use something called the distributive property. And it's an extremely important uh, property in mathematics, and it's widely used in algebra, okay? And for some reason, a lot of students tend to confuse or make errors with the distributive property initially, okay? Uh, but, you know, if they're going to survive and do well in algebra, you got to figure that out. So if you want to, uh, you know, challenge yourself, maybe pause the video and see if you know how to do this uh, particular problem. I think that would be a good use of your time. If you're going to stick with me for a couple minutes, we're going to walk through exactly what to do step by step to get the solution to this equation. And this would be appropriate for anybody who's studying any sort of algebra, pre-algebra, algebra one, college algebra. Uh, there's just a ton of different flavors of algebra, but basically you're learning the same thing. And uh, algebra, a huge part of it is solving equations. Okay, so we're going to uh, solve for y here in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And let me just tell you very briefly about my math help program, of which you can uh, find the link to in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. I also have a ton of test prep courses. So if you're taking an exam and it has math on it, that would be like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT. Um, ASVAB, teacher certification exams, nursing school entrance exam, ACUPLACE or CLEP exam, you get the idea, right? So a lot of exams people have to take, and generally speaking, there is math on these exams. I also do a lot with homeschooling, so if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool math program. Then obviously help those of you who are having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you are a math student, I must stress the importance of note-taking been teaching math for decades, if your notes are not like stellar, perfect, awesome, then you're doing yourself a disservice. Okay, if you really want to learn math and be successful in it, really focus on your notes. That's going to help you tremendously. But uh, hey, you can use my notes as you improve your notes. I'm going to leave links to my notes in the description of this video as well. Okay, so let's get into this problem. If you think you know how to solve it, okay, I think this would be a good little pop quiz for you. Just go ahead and pause the video, but I'm going to go ahead and get into the solution right now. Okay, so I was talking about that distributor property, right? That is really, really critical. And anytime you see a number, like 4, 3, it doesn't make a difference. It could be a fraction. And a parenthesis, like, like so, a sum or difference. As a matter of fact, let me just show you the distributor property formally. It looks like this, and let me do it up here. Okay, I'm making a big deal out of it. So let me just show you. Technically, it's A times uh, B plus C is equal to AB plus AC. What that means is this. If I have two times um, X plus three, okay, I can't do anything with it like so. So the distributive property says I can distribute, right? You hear that name, distribute means to kind of pass out. This 2 times this, I can multiply, so that gives me 2x, and I can also multiply this 2 times this number, so that's going to be plus 6. Now, this is a quick, quick um, explanation of the distributive property. This works with sums and difference. Uh, you can have 3, 4 things. You can have, like, let's say, 4 times x squared minus uh, 2x plus 9, et cetera, et cetera. You can have a, a lot of different situations that employs the distributive property. Again, it's extremely important to understand that in algebra. But uh, if you are kind of confused with this, let me just suggest that uh, you follow up, maybe check out some of the, my videos in my pre-algebra playlist on the distributive property, okay? Very, very important. But anyways, uh, just a quick uh, review of basically what it is. So when you're solving an equation like so, you have to look for... Um, uh, situations where you can apply the distributive property. That's always kind of the first thing you need to do. So in this particular equation, I have a difference here. I have a number outside of it. So I'm thinking, ooh, I got to do the distributive property. I can't do anything with it like so because my variable's inside. So I'm going to take that 4. I'm going to multiply it by 2y. Okay, so 4 times 2y is 8y. And then this 4 times that 1 is, of course, 4. Okay, 4 times 1 is 4. 
So this is the first step, okay? This is the key step. And if you do this correctly, if I was grading your, your uh, paper and you showed me this right off the bat, I would be like, good job, nice work. You're showing me that you understand the distributor property. Okay, that's why it's so important that you show all your work in mathematics because your teacher, whoever's going to be grading your work, is you know can better understand what you know and don't know. Okay, and if you actually get the problem wrong, but you um, understood components of the problem, you're going to get points. Okay, but if you go from here to like your answer, y equals you know ten thousand and two and it's wrong, you're going to get a big, you know, sad face because your teacher's like, hey, I'm just going to give you no points. You got to show me something. Okay. You got to show your work in mathematics for sure. All right, let's move on with the problem. So at this point, this becomes basically what we call a two-step equation. So I want to solve for y. I want to get y by itself. So the first thing I need to do, I got this 8y minus uh, uh, 4 is equal to 20. I want to get rid of this four. I'm going to move all the numbers to the right-hand side. Okay, just remember when you're solving an algebra equation, basically you want to get all your variables to the left, all your numbers to the right. So whoever's on the wrong-hand side of the equation, you're going to have to shuffle things around uh, to do so. So here, I got this number. I'm like, yeah, I got to get you over to the right-hand side. So the way I do that, I get this minus four. I'm going to add four to it. Okay, so if I take this negative four, I add a four to it, it makes it go away. But remember, in algebra, Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do the exact same thing on the other side of the equation. That's critical, okay? That's a critical component. Just think of equations as little seesaws, little balance scales, the teeter-totters, right? So yeah, you have to always keep it in balance. So I'm like, hey, I put four over here. Well, if I put four over here, okay, this thing is gonna go like that. So I gotta put four over like this to keep it in balance. So don't be afraid to do things to equations Okay, of course, we want to do the right things to equations. As long as you're doing the same thing equally to both sides, you're not going to break the equation. Okay, all right, so now I'm going to add down in a column manner. So 8y plus nothing is just 8y. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. So I don't need to write a 0. That just goes away. Now I have 20 plus 4. That's 24. Okay, so if you show me that, I'm like, all right, boom, you know what you're doing. Uh, how to solve a two-step equation. Now I'm down to one step. Okay, all I have to do to solve for y is what? I just simply need to divide both sides of the equation by eight. Okay, remember I want to get y by itself. So whatever is in front of that y, okay, in this manner, uh, multiplication, eight times y, just simply divide both sides of the equation by eight. So 24 divided by eight is three. So y is equal to three. Now, if you got this problem right, I must in turn give you a nice happy face with a good old fashioned 1983 Mohawk uh, A+, with a 100%. So nice job, okay? Um, but here's the thing. If your work wasn't as clear, okay? If you just kind of didn't show as many steps, you need to improve that, okay? Even though you got the right answer, you need to really focus on how to write out your work, okay? Generally speaking, when you're solving a lot of equations uh, or math problems, they typically end up kind of looking like an ice cream cone. You'll start off with something big, especially equations, and you're just kind of whittling it down, da, 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 until you get to your final answer. So, you know, make it so that your teacher, whoever's looking at your work, can read and see, oh, you understand that, you understand this, you understand this, and this, and this, and this, and obviously you got the right answer, okay? So much of mathematics um, is writing things and keeping things neat and organized. And the only way you're going to get better at being neat and organized on a daily basis, quite frankly, is to practice taking great math notes and obviously doing all those things that no one likes to do, like homework, etc. You know, nobody likes to do that, but it's critical and it is a requirement in order to be successful in mathematics. Okay, so hopefully this video uh, was a good little review. Maybe you even learned something. If that is the case, please consider smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider uh, subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over 1,000 plus videos, basic to advanced mathematics, but my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.